السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سلطان قدرات ما شاء الله I'm happy to be here بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Firstly I thank Allah Almighty for giving us this beautiful opportunity to meet in person Say Alhamdulillah Mashallah, Mashallah Secondly, as we were driving from Jensan coming to Sultan Qudurat, I noticed the roads are beautiful. I noticed six lanes, three going and three, three going and three, coming, Mashallah. I noticed as we entered development that showed that Mashallah, there are people who are concerned about this beautiful place but I want to tell you they gave me a topic this evening to speak about building bridges of understanding and I want to say let's talk of the first part of it building to build in order to build you need to be responsible the young out here if you are part of the youth you need to know something you need to know that you are needed in the Ummah. You are needed in your city and in your country. And in order for you to be able to contribute in the best possible way to all of that, you have to have a few things. Number one, you must have a connection with the one who made you because you are going to go back to him. There is no way that you can have total holistic success in this world and the next when you don't even believe in the next or when you don't have a connection with the one who made you in the first place whom you are going to return to. So you have to have a connection with Allah, your maker. Secondly, you need to be responsible and ensure that your habits your character, your conduct is developed to the best degree. Because if you don't have good character, good conduct, and you allow yourself to slide into laziness, to slide into drugs, to slide into immorality, to slide into that which is a waste of time, it's not going to benefit you neither for your deen nor for your dunya, then you will be of no use. You will be of no use. You will be an irritation and the people around you won't even want to interact with you so you need to have good habits away from the drugs away from laziness away from bad habits abuse and so many evil things that shaitan or the devil might try to attract us towards we need to protect ourselves from all that and then you start thinking of how to be productive how to be person who can give and build and promote goodness and sow the seeds of success in a way that tomorrow when others are driving from Jensan they will see greater development and guess what they won't have to drive to Sultan Kudurat because in the future you will have and bad ways and sometimes we see the youth in some countries in some cities we see the youth and they look so demotivated they look like they're not even interested in the future they're not even interested in their own lives the older people come about and they say you know what I achieved this and I achieved that and the young people are all smoking smoking cigarettes smoking something else and they're just chilling and relaxing and they're sitting with their friends and sometimes they are on drugs and they are belong to this gangs and so on no 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 we are believers we believe in Allah we are worried about the last day Allah Almighty wants you and I 
to develop as much as we can the goodness on this earth. So if I do good, Wallahi, it's something that will be in my book of good deeds on the day of judgment. When we drove in, not far from this place, next door to this particular place, I noticed a massive building, massive building. What is this building? They said, this is a hospital. I said, tell me more about this hospital. It looks unique. They said, this hospital is one of the biggest in the country where health care is given free of charge. Is that true? Allah, 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 Allah. For me, someone built their Jannah. Someone built their Jannah. Someone did such a good deed. They thought of the place, the people, the Muslims, the non-Muslims, whoever was sick and ill to come and receive health care. Free of charge here in Sultan Qudarat at a massive hospital. I'm sure it, it was growing and it will still grow and develop. And it is a shining example for others across the globe to do things for their own communities and then for their nation. And inshallah, one day the whole world will learn from that and practice it. So well done, subhanAllah. Takbir! MashaAllah. I was so happy. And then to see development, to see people, I met some of the, those responsible, some of the leaders of society and community. And each one of them outshines the other. Amazing, beautiful people. We need to learn because, like I said right at the beginning, I just need two things. If I'm missing one of them, I still need to work harder. If I'm missing one of the two, I need to work harder. Because what is the point of achieving success in this world, one after the other, but when I die and I close my eyes, I say, oh, I forgot to prepare for this day. I forgot. But I, when I was where I was in the world, I had such a lovely life. I built, I developed, I did, and it's amazing. But you know what? My brothers, my sisters, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If we are balanced, we will build both. I will work hard to achieve in this world. I will study. I will get my degrees. I will do whatever I have to do. I will get my job. I will get my salary. But I will pray five times a day. I will connect with Allah. I will recite the Quran. I will make sure I understand it. I will try to put it into practice. And this is how I will be able to live in a holistic way, a beautiful, amazing way, such that when my eyes close, I'm even happier than I was while my eyes were open. Imagine when you're about to die and the angels come to you and tell you, for you, there is good news, good news of paradise. You don't need to worry, you don't need to fear. Imagine if the angels came to you and told you that. Wallahi, the Quran tells us that the angels come and say that to people. <laughs> Just 
sister, my brother, but I will not punch them and hit them and cause destruction because that is not what Allah wants. I live with respect. I fulfill the rights of my mother, even though my mother might be a person who's not a Muslim, but I will go and fulfill her rights and honor and respect the fact that she is my mother. I will serve her. I will spend on her. I will buy for her. I will make sure that I do not say one word that is unkind to her because the Quran says that if your parents are not Muslim, it does not mean you should be unkind to them. Rather, you live with them with goodness and with kindness. And the same rule applies. That is hurtful to them, that is disrespectful to them or unkind to them. Even if you are correcting them, correct them respectfully in a beautiful way. That's the teaching of Islam. So imagine your brothers if they are not Muslim, your sisters if they are not Muslim, your children, some of them if they may not be Muslim because I know people who have entered the fold of Islam but their children did not enter the fold of Islam. What should happen? Wallahi, there should be a beautiful relationship and an understanding. Listen, this is my faith. I don't eat pork. I don't eat that which is not slaughtered in the proper way. I don't drink alcohol. I'd like you to understand this. I love you, the natural love, because you are my son or, depending on who it is, you are my mother or you are my, my brother or whoever I'm sharing the place with. And I just want you to understand this. I respect the fact that I'm living here with you. You belong to a different faith. I'm not going to get up and hurt you, harm you, abuse you, insult you, belittle you. But I want you to know you belong to a faith. I belong to a faith. We have to live together in this one house. There we go. That is Islam. That's the teaching of Islam. Sometimes there are young people. And they ask someone, look, I'm a Muslim, I turned to Islam recently, and what should I do because I'm living with my non-Muslim family? And sometimes, some people don't know how they live. They say, no, you must leave the house, you must go away. Why should I go away? Maybe I don't have the money, the means, I need to live, this is my family, these are my people. Why should I run away? I need to live, there will be respect, they are not hurting me or harming me. It's a different story if someone is harming you, then it's a different story, but they're not harming you. You cannot use the fact that you belong to a different faith as, as the point of creating fighting and killing and warfare and insults within your own home. No, no, it will not happen. Look, our enemies who do not want to see us develop, they want from to fight amongst each other. So there are two types of fights amongst each other. Number one, that which is within one faith. You find in some parts of maybe this country and other countries where there are Muslims alone, it's possible that they would be fighting amongst each other over something petty, over something material, something about this worldly material living or life. And they will fight with one another even though So Allah tells us, be careful, watch out. There is no need to fight amongst each other because those fights are from shaitan. And then there is another type of a fight, the second one. When people of different faiths are made to fight by a third party, a third party, and they're telling you, you know what? No, no, you need to fight these guys because of this and because of that. My brother, there is peace. We need to build the nation. No nation can be built when there is war. No can be built when there is abuse and insult of one another you are doubting each other you hate each other how are you going to build your nation it will collapse it will drop look at what happened for example in Marawi some time back what happened did they not destroy the place did it not cause so much of harm and what were they doing were they not crazy people who destroyed everything they had May Allah Almighty protect all of us. There is no need to do that. We are Muslims. We believe in peace. We believe in goodness. Yes, I will not compromise my faith. And I don't want you to compromise.
promise your faith either. But we will respect each other. We will discuss the differences. We will, we will propagate and we will convey what we have. Alhamdulillah, in a good way. We will discuss it in a beautiful way. And we will not destroy our nation. We will not break our own homes with our own hands. You know, we have thousands of people seated here. I have one request from the organizers to turn on the lights because I need to see you. We need to turn on the lights. I want to see the crowds of people in front of me. I cannot see anyone besides a few in the front here. I don't come to Jensen every day. I don't come to Sultan Kudurat every day. I am here today. I want to see these beautiful faces, mashallah. So I will just ask the organizers to turn on the lights. Thank you. Mashallah, mashallah. It's coming. Don't worry. Here it will take two minutes, but we will achieve by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how we will build the bridges of understanding. We need to realize that we are people. We are people who would love to see growth such that when we die, people can remember us for a long, long time and pray for us and make dua for us. Right? MashaAllah, MashaAllah. I think we have the light in facing me. Right? Is that what it is? If they're going to face it on you, it won't face me anymore. Inshallah. But now I can see quite a few people. Alhamdulillah. So, if we do something in this world known as a Sada Ajariya, what does that mean? Islam teaches us something amazing. It teaches us that there is a certain type of charity that you can give that will result in a reward being achieved over a long time even after your death. So, if I give you food, it's a charity. Even if you are related to me or not related to me or you are wealthy or you are not wealthy, when you feed someone else, it's a charity. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, you feed one another. Feed the food. To whom? To your relatives, your family members, you call them for a meal. Mashallah, that's good enough. That's good enough. I can now see. Mashallah, you see? Alhamdulillah. I'm super happy. Look, all those brothers and sisters all over there. Mashallah, mashallah. When I came in here and I greeted, maybe you felt like left out. So let's greet you again. Salaamu Alaikum. Amazing, amazing, amazing. MashaAllah. So this is one of the loudest replies in the whole world. <laughs> one of the loudest replies in the whole world. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. It means I need to come back again here, right? Yeah. You know that yes is so loud, it makes me feel like staying here. <laughs> MashaAllah. 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 So, a sadaqa jariya, a charity, there are a few types of charities. One, you give someone food, for example, they ate it. When they ate the food, what happens? You have a reward for it. If they were poor, you have a double reward for it. If they were related to you, you have a double reward for it. If they were related to you and they were poor, you have a triple reward. SubhanAllah. Because one is, you fed them. Two is, the fact that they were poor. Three is the fact that they were related to you. And if the person was poor and related to you and your neighbor, you have a quadruple reward. SubhanAllah. But once they eat it, that was your reward. It's written exactly how much it is next to your name and you did a good deal. But there is another way of doing good deeds. Let me do something that when I do it, it continues to benefit the people for a long for example, I planted seeds for a tree that grows mangosteen, right? It's not a fruit from my part of the world. It's a fruit from here, I think, right? Or I planted seeds of a tree that grew bananas. Whatever fruit or something that provides shade. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says you will continue to receive a reward every time someone benefits 
from the shade or the fruit of that particular tree and it will continue to go until someone chops the tree off and we are encouraged not to chop trees for no reason. Not to chop trees for no reason. There is a reason, Alhamdulillah, no reason. Be careful, you need to preserve the ecosystem, the forest, the trees, the greenery and so on. So imagine you are getting a reward and that reward is clocking each time every season comes, the mangoes come again. People are eating mangoes. Who planted this tree here? They will tell you my great grandfather planted it here, right? The great grandfather is getting a reward every season and even beyond the season when there is just people sitting under the shade and that is called a charity that lasts so long. And imagine the more people that benefit because there are more trees, the more reward I get. And where am I? I'm already in my grave. I'm already in my grave. And because I'm in my grave and I'm achieving and receiving reward upon reward upon reward, something else happens. Anyone who plants a seed that came from that particular tree anywhere else in the world, I will still get a full reward because I was the one who planted the original tree then. Subhanallah. Look at how Allah works. It is so amazing that